We're sort of in this, what I like to affectionately call as this sort of like fuck them kids era of horror. <laughs> um, I mean, we've got like Evil Dead, Hereditary, Speak No Evil, and uh, The Boogeyman. Yeah. But it's, Stephen King has never been particularly precious about protecting kids, but do you think that kind of ups the ante a little bit when you don't know, like the audience can't rely on like, oh, the kids are gonna be all right. Totally, to there are certain like, there, there are certain codes of conduct mm -hmm. within horror that most people know when they sit down in a cinema, you know, you're not going to kill the kids, right. you're not going to kill the dog, uh -huh. probably. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's, you know, it's one of the things I wanted to do with this movie is th the first scene of the movie, I wanted to go hard and I wanted mm -hmm. to, to set out that this movie could go anywhere. Nobody was safe and, um, you know, we're a PG-13, which is insane because <laughs> of how right. in intense this movie is. But I wanted that first scene to, to, to kind of like, I wanted them to feel like there was kind of a madman in the driver's seat a little bit, and yeah. that, that even you know the kind of um, the, the the youngest, most angelic characters could be for the chop. Yeah, it, it pulls the rug out from under you a little bit because you're like, there's there's no way, there's no way, and it's like, okay, there's tension, but there's no way, and yeah. then there is a way, and I'm like, yeah. wait, what am I watching? Where is this guy going to take us right now? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> You're like so like pleased with it too. I love. I'm so pleased. Like, I always so like every screening. I'll like I'll peek through the curtain and watch just. He's that waiting bit. for that moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's this sweet spot of how often you see a creature or a monster on screen, and I feel mm. like you definitely hit that mark. What was the process like of kind of Goldilocksing that like just right amount? Well, we, I mean, there's there's you know there's a couple of examples that we kept going back to, which was Jaws and Alien, mm. which you know the two pretty lofty examples, but we had those. Um, on a whiteboard in the edit room, we had the amount of screen time that Bruce the shark gets mm -hmm. in Jaws and the amount of screen time Alien gets in Alien. And we tried to always hover around that mark. And we tested the movie a whole bunch of times. We did mini tests and then we did a couple of really big tests. Mm -hmm. um, and it felt like th the less we showed this creature, the scarier it was, the higher our scare, uh, you know, uh, feedback became. And it ended up being that this movie has, I, th I think it's like, it's like a second less of our boogie than you see of the shark in Jaws, mm -hmm. and a second and a half less than the alien and aliens, or maybe that's flipped, but it's something like yeah. that. Yeah, nice. Um, I mean, those are good it's, markers to it's go a by. Good metric. I feel like. yeah, 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 exactly. I'm also not just picturing you like with like, like crazily, but like with the strings and the board, and you're like, and the thing, and the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I look like Charlie from All <laughs> yeah, the Sonic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so were there versions of it, like other cuts, where you have more of the creature, and then you just kind of kept scaling back? Yeah. So one of the ways that, and this was this was totally new to me. Like when the creature is totally CGI, mm -hmm. and the way that the way that you build out the film is you start with like animatics, you have these like bad stop motion animations of the creature and then you edit that in and you see if you need it and maybe we can't afford this shot so we gotta do three shots in one shot. And so we started out with um, a lot of animatic and you saw the creature for, for you know, um, you know, like minutes longer than, than probably ended up in the movie. Uh, and then you'd slowly whittle it down, you realize what you need and what you don't need. And then when you've settled on the shots that you think, yeah, these are gonna be in the movie, then you go to the next stage and they get textured and they look a bit more like a real monster and then you cut down from there. And it's kind of like, it's a process of whittling down until you've got the key shots. Right. Um, that are going to represent your creature in the movie. How did you guys come to that creature design? Like, what, I, like how is it described in the, sh the short story? I mean, and then versus it's, like when you're just kind of mapping it out in this final product. Yeah, it's very slimy in the short story. Okay. It's very kind of wet <laughs> in the short story, and uh, and we wanted to kind of like pay homage to the to the short story. There's a there's, without spoiling it. There's like a there's an element of the creature that's that's revealed in the third act in this kind of weird body horror Lovecraftian scene that um, it's gross, <laughs> really gross, and and uh, again PG thirteen, it's crazy. The um, the the intention there was to to um, to reference back to the short story, which has a very gross ending and a gross reveal of the creature, um, and also to kind of we're seeing a lot of the boogeyman in the end of the movie and I wanted there to be an element of the creature that's still weird and unknown and kind of hints at uh, more that's unseen. Right. Um, and then the creature itself just needed to be uh, stark and simple and something that you could imagine a kid drawing in crayon, mm -hmm. you know, those kind of the big chomping teeth and the, the kind of cat's eyes. Yeah. Um, so we were constantly kind of simplifying, simplifying it down to this final design. Well, that's a very kind of primal fear when you break it down to like, what are the scariest things? What's a predator? It's something that has big fucking teeth mm -hmm. that can come at you in the night and, and eat see you, you in the dark. and see you in the dark. Yeah, yeah. those are the it's two like things where it's like, nobody, nope, I'm out. Yeah, nobody <laughs> wants to be looking into the darkness and seeing something staring right back at you. I mean, sometimes, like on a Wednesday night, cool. Otherwise, no. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, in another interview, you mentioned the sort of like the happy accident of that glowing moon ball. Oh, yeah. And like you also mentioned your weapon of choice against the boogeyman as a kid. Do you want to kind of talk about that difference and how it lent itself to these set pieces? Yeah, like I just remembered as a kid, I had this like really crappy uh, knockoff lightsaber <laughs> toy that I would that I would swing about and sometimes like, sleep in bed with when I was when I was scared. And so originally, Sawyer's character was meant to have this toy lightsaber and we wrote it into the script that it was going to start malfunctioning when the creature was about and we'd written all these different gags um, into the movie. And about two weeks before we started shooting, Disney uh, looked at the script and said, you know, like I'd forgotten that, that Vivian plays, um, what's her name, Pr Princess right. Leia in, in uh, one of the Star Wars shows. And they were like, nah, we can't have Princess Leia holding a crappy knockoff lightsaber that breaks. That's not a good look yeah. for us. So, so they pulled the plug on that and we had to very quickly come up with an alternative. Mm -hmm. So me and the production designer and the props master had to just, we basically spent an afternoon Googling like kids toys that light up. Mm -hmm. And we found this, this, this moon ball and just uh, you know, I, I went off and wrote a couple of ideas for how we could we could play the scares, the rolling the ball under the bed of the creature that becomes our first uh, first glimpse at the mm -hmm. at the thing, and um, and it ended up being the best part of the movie. It's like it's it's far more iconic than a lightsaber. Mm -hmm. It's it's something that kind of like belongs to our movie now. It's a, you know, every on every movie you've got a happy accident like that that always makes the film better. Yeah, it's I, I'm trying to think of it as a lightsaber, and I, it, it would have come across as a weird like. A reverse Easter egg or something. Yeah, <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah. that, she's Leia, so she's got a lightsaber. Exactly. You're like, no, no, it was and in there before. Sophie, I think, was in a Star Wars show as well. Yeah, exactly. So, so, yeah. So it's, uh, <laughs> You're like, this is an homage to Star Wars yeah. all around. <laughs> yeah. No, but that moon gag was so great, though, because like the theater that I was in was just yeah. like people screamed, you know, like yeah, you yeah. hear everyone kind of squirming, and it's like that fun anticipation, and then just screaming. Yeah, <laughs> like, love that. That's... It's so good. <laughs> Does that make you excited still? Like even if you've seen it like ten times with an audience, like when you can feel like that the uncomfortability. Totally, yeah. totally. I can watch this movie again and again if it's with a great crowd. Right. Because you know, you're watching it afresh. You're watching yeah. it through their eyes. That's why horror is so fun, though, and that's yeah. why I missed going to the with the right crowd. Sometimes yes. I go to theaters and I'm like, I, I don't miss this one bit. But then uh -huh, you go uh -huh. with the horror crowd and it's the right crowd, and it's just that energy and the electricity, and you're yeah. just laughing at the people that are like shitting themselves. Exactly, <laughs> right. it's the best. There's nothing like it. <laughs> it's a good time. Uh, your cast is amazing in this, obviously. Yeah. David Dotsmalchin, you give that dude like two seconds of screen time and he will make Steal a meal movie. out of it. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. and it just resonates. Mm -hmm. It's wild. Yeah. Did you have him do that Lester monologue like as like his audition or? No, I mean he didn't. He didn't have to audition. I've been such a huge fan of okay. his, and I just I just knew that he would be perfect yeah. for this for this part. Even though he's very different from the Lester in the mm -hmm. short story. Lester in the short story is like a kind of angry truck driver, kind of harbinger of doom yeah. type, and and felt. Um, like we wanted to, I wanted the audience to um, invest in this character more. I wanted them to feel more for this character. Mm -hmm. And David came with this take that was totally in line with that. He came with this really kind of beautiful, empathetic take on the character, um, which makes you feel those moments mm -hmm. where he suddenly switches and it right. feels like, oh, this guy is going to jump across the table and stab me with a yeah. pencil. You know, he can do that turn just with a little flicker of his eyes. Mm -hmm. It's one of the one of the amazing things that he can do as a performer. Um, and you you. You just don't know whether to trust him. I mean, that's really the that's really the the, um, the feeling we want to elicit in the audience in that scene. Right. You want them to be leaning forward and wondering whether they believe him. Or whether, mm -hmm. you know, is he the is he the reason his kids are dead, or is it this creature? He toes that line of kind of wounded but wild yes. at the same time. So that's you're like, great... I feel for him, but you're like, I'm also kind of scared of yeah. you. <laughs> that's a much better way of putting it. I'm going to steal that. You're going to use that. All right, there you go. Totally. Wounded and wild. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to make T-shirts too. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, um, Sophie Thatcher is amazing. Chris yeah. Messina is amazing. But they, they, Sophie has a lot to do in this. But I think some of my favorite parts, Sophie and Chris do so much in like the quiet moments yeah. as well, which I thought was really cool. Yeah, those are some of my favorite scenes. There's a scene where it's just them talking on, he's sitting on the edge of her bed and they're kind of talking about what's happened that day and they're talking about the mum but they're not really talking about it and they're both like holding back and trying to connect but failing and it's like, it's such a kind of understated scene and they play it so beautifully. And I'm always like amazed that that scene is in this movie. That I, I always loved it in the script and me and Mark worked on it. We always thought that it would probably get cut down and cut down in favor of the scares and the, the um, you know, the the thrill ride aspect of the movie. But I love that this movie gives space for beautiful scenes like that. Yeah, and, and it was just so, that's how people talk when they can't talk or they don't talk. And exactly. it was just, I think maybe that way, it was so raw, everything yeah. about that scene. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and it, you know, the rest of the movie, I'm whizzing the camera around mm -hmm. and doing all sorts of, that, they, they 
I knew that they would they would play it so beautifully. We just shot two cameras, one on each of them. We did a couple of takes, mm -hmm. and that was it. You know, yeah. we, we knew we had it. We had something special. Nice. Yeah. And Vivian was amazing. And just the Incredible. level of fear that she can broadcast, it kind of was like heartbreaking at some times. Did you ever feel bad? Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> Always. Always. <laughs> Always. The whole time. <laughs> uh, no, she's got, I mean, I, like at first when I was working with her on those scenes, I was like, I was like, I'm going to help you out with some of these reactions. Yeah. And I was like, I had, this, I had this folder that I would like I'd smash on the floor to make loud <laughs> noise. I asked her and her mom permission. Oh, um, you were just coming she, up behind her and smashing yeah, she, And then after a couple of days, she came up to me and like, she's like, she's like, Rob, I know you like making loud noises, but I really don't need this. And she's just like, <laughs> she was such a pro. She'd just like, she'd go to that space. She'd take 30 <laughs> seconds, do her breathing exercise, and tears would be streaming down her face. No. And she'd oh just get God. herself there. So. That's amazing. I love when kids, like when you're kind of like being overly gentle or too gentle, you know, yeah. and like maybe kind of like talking down to them a little bit and they're like, listen, yeah, they're yeah, actually yeah. like, I'm a 50 year old man in this body, I'm, she I got it. Totally <laughs> like, Sorry. She's an old soul, <laughs> it doesn't do it justice. Yeah, I love that so much. If you could take a swing at another Stephen King adaptation, what would that be? I really want to do The Langoliers, another short okay. story. I think yes. it's such a great kind of clean, um, scary setup. Mm -hmm. It's like kind of, it's sort of sci-fi horror. It's very heady. Um, it's another it's another creature creature feature, but it's it's uh, yeah. I haven't seen anything I haven't seen anything like that, and I think it's unlike a lot of stuff that yes. King has yeah. written. Um, there was a TV movie that 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 I have a lot of fun with, but I don't think by any means there's been like a definitive take on okay. it. Um, and I've just got a great, I've got a great way into it. And, and I mentioned it, I mentioned it to King and he, he loved the idea of, of working on that. So it, that I, it might- That's casual. Mentioned it to King. <laughs> my buddy King <laughs> called him up. My boy, my boy <laughs> yeah. King. No, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, so who, who knows, but I'd love to do that. Uh, I feel like, okay, I feel like I have high hopes for that. Yeah, <laughs> I actually, the, the TV movie gets a lot of shit, but I do, I like it, but I think I was the right age yeah. to watch it is why. It's fun, <laughs> it's fun. And that, you know, they, they were trying out some very early <laughs> CGI that, that maybe doesn't hold up quite so well. Right. I think I'd go with a different creature design instead of the meatballs. Yeah. <laughs> so no meatballs with like the scary void mouths, that's not what no, you would I'd quite probably go. put in a meatball reference, but oh, I'd leave, okay. it, leave it at that, a little Easter egg. <laughs> It's like a, just a kind of like a critters kind of moment. Yeah, like it's like an upgrade. It could be a stealth okay. critters reboot. Yes, that needs to happen. <laughs> okay, uh, Sophie said she would love to play Carrie, so I also need you to maybe get go, get going on that as well because I yeah. would love to see that. You know, I think Carrie is the best Stephen King adaptation. Yeah. I watched okay. it again. I watched it again for the first time in like ten mm -hmm. years, a couple of weeks ago, and I just it just think it's incredible. It's like it's it's way funnier than I remember, way more compassionate. Like the scares are great. The style of it is insane. Um, that'd be a scary one to touch. Yeah. When you say best, do you also mean the most faithful or just just the best? I think in it's general? the best movie that's okay. been made of a Stephen yes. King. Okay. Uh, novel. All right. Including The Shining. Including The Shining. I was Include, like, including The Shining. Including The Shining. Which is not a fa faithful adaptation, but I do. I, no. That's one of my favorite movies, but separately from the book. I yeah. like just. Do you see the European cut of The Shining? No, I don't think so, no. Because I, I grew up on the, you know, being from the UK, I grew up on the European cut, which is like half an hour shorter. And I watched the American cut of The Shining recently, and there's all this stuff that I don't remember, like, th like there's whole sections of, of the movie that I've never seen before. I'm now I'm very curious recently. of what's cut out of the European the Europe, version. The European cut is so much better. Yeah, is it really? It's so okay. Much <laughs> see, that's hard because I grew up with that other one, so no, I have I all nostalgia you... working against me too. Yeah. So see. That, I think that's probably it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm gonna check it out. Mm -hmm. um, I love that this got a PG-13 rating because I feel like King is often the thing that people come to way too early, and it kind of scars them. So this could be like the Boogeyman yeah. could be the thing that makes like future creeps like us and like fuck some kid up, and like you hear this ten years down the line, yeah. like, the Boogeyman is the, is the thing. That's what I hope for. Yeah. So you. So originally our trailer was playing before um, Ant-Man or so, I had one of the Marvel mm -hmm. movies and um, it got so many complaints that oh, they, no. had to, they had to pull it from the daytime screenings and <laughs> Disney got a bit of their money back because <laughs> so many parents said my kid, <laughs> my kid couldn't even watch Ant-Man because he was oh, crying my so God. much. Which is great, you want to hear that. I like to imagine that there were at least like three or four kids in each theatre that were like, oh, but what is this? Just wide-eyed. It just yeah. like opens up a whole new world. Exactly, that's who you're making the movie for. <laughs> Last question, what was the thing that you came to like way too early? Like what did you see too early and that was just kind of shaped this journey for you? Oh, I mean, like, I, like my parents tried to raise me with, 
with no TV, no scary movies, none of all this stuff. So I, I, that worked well, okay. I know, it completely <laughs> backfired. I, so I had this like portable TV under my bed, and every time I saw a horror movie VHS at a yard sale or anything, anywhere I could get my hands on it, I'd buy it and I'd hide it under my bed. And so I watched like Hellraiser, Evil Dead, Cannibal Holocaust, movies like that. Like, you saw Cannibal Holocaust too, as a kid? I think I was probably 13 when I watched that's Cannibal That's still, that's so young. To me, that's, that's a kid. Too that's too young to see yeah. Cannibal Holocaust. Like, but like, ele- I was like 11 or, 11 or 12 watching, uh, watching Hellraiser. Amazing. You know, Hellbound. <laughs> nice. And loving it. So <laughs> I'm sure you probably did. Probably all of, all of that has done permanent nice. damage. All right. We would have been friends. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And I'm such a fan of Host, and it's wonderful to see you now doing Disney movies. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Disney's the boogeyman. Yeah, Disney's the boogeyman. Congratulations. Great. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Come <laughs> <laughs>